Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 3 of how to get better at World of Warships and in today's episode I'm going to talk about a very very fundamental skill and that has to do with aiming. Now do keep in mind that I've talked about this sort of in episode 2, there's a bunch of things that you could do in your game to make it better for you to aim with and one of them is to get the correct crosshair in my opinion which is the Nomogram Classic Crosshair. Um, there's also a couple of other small modifications such as navigator, uh, such as those info panels that will also assist you as well. So I do recommend you check out episode 2 if you haven't already and maybe do these things first in order to get yourself set up. So during the course of this particular video, what am I going to talk about? Well one, I'm going to talk about the crosshair and how to use it and what all the numbers mean. And so hopefully that once you have an understanding of the crosshair, you can use it in game. Second, I'm going to talk to you about how to hit broadside targets. Then I'm going to sort of elaborate a little bit more on how to hit targets that are angling in a little bit more than let's say full broadside or like semi broadside, you know, targets that start to come in in excess of 45 degree angles. Finally, what I'm not going to cover in this video is how do you deal with ships that are trying to actively dodge or kite away from your shells. That's much more of a practice problem and much more of an individual situation problem. So there's no sort of universal, here's a quick way to, you know, hit those targets. Aiming, after all, is an art form, so really spend time and practice on perfecting your aim. And finally, there's one last thing to talk about, is how do you actually know that you need to actually work on your aim? I've had people tell me before, hey, I think my aim is fine. There's other things that maybe I have problems with, but my aim is great. And, you know, one quick look at their numbers, and I'm like, well, not really, because here's the proof that shows you in comparison to maybe someone who's a lot better than you, and you can see the vast disparity between these two numbers. So before I do anything else, let's first sort of show you how to do this stat lookup and how this stat lookup can help you. Alrighty, so onto a stats website we go first, and this is Wild's Numbers. This is a very good stats web page for looking at sort of other people's stats and sort of tracking your own performance as well. So first things first, make sure you do select the correct server region. Uh, for example, NA versus SEA. If you look up stats page and you don't select the right region, you're going to get slightly distorted stats, especially considering that SEA has very interesting numbers of CV populations, for example. So first things first, you go to warships uh, tab, you click on it, you find the warship you want to look at. So I'm using an example as Buffalo, a ship that I enjoy playing. So I scroll down and here's the leaderboard. These are the top players on the NA region with a minimum of 40 battles in the ship. And I look at the top, let's say, 10 players, and I go, wow, you know, they're over 3,000 PR. They've got pretty solid win rates. Um, the top players, notably, have 1.73, 1.74 frags per game, so that's really, really good frag numbers. And they're doing, almost for the top player, 125,000 plus damage. The next one down the line is 112K, so all over 100,000 damage. Okay, so how do I compare against these particular players? So I pull up my own page, I find my Buffalo numbers, and I look at it and I go, well, you know, my personal rating is pretty good, 3,139, but my average damage is a little bit lower than them at 96,335. I am doing pretty good in the average kills department at 1.71. Hmm. So, of course, if I was to put myself, because I haven't reached the minimum 40 battles yet, but if I was to put myself within this top 10, I think I'd be about rank number 6 right now in terms of personal rating. Uh, in terms of average kills, I'm pretty much up there as well. Hmm. My average damage just isn't that good. What's going on? So, you know, grab the name of the top player and take a look at their stats. So pull up Dolphin Princess on the official World of Warships page under the Players tab here. And I'm going to just go take a look at their Buffalo stats and see how I compare. And I look at their Buffalo stats and wow, look at that main battery hit ratio, 43%. How much better is that compared to me? And I look at my own stats and I go, oh boy, 36%. Definitely some work for me to do there. So even though when I'm in my games, I have relatively good impact because I am killing you know, enemy warships, I'm doing good damage, I'm just not up to their level of damage yet. And maybe a huge part of that is the fact that my main battery hit ratio is a little bit on the low side. So this is something I can definitely start to consider working on. Now, of course, there are other things as well. Yeah, there's obviously things like positioning and things like that that will also play a role. But if raw mechanically, I'm a little bit off in my aim and I'm doing worse than them, that could be potentially thousands of damage per game difference. And so that is the first thing I want to look at and maybe the first thing I want to work on. And that's why this episode is going to focus on aiming. So here we go. In game, and this is the Nomogram Classic Crosshair. You'll notice that as I'm moving my reticle up and down, um, in this case up actually, the horizontal line scales accordingly. Now the first thing that you're going to use is that from the full alternative interface, you'll remember seeing that shelf flight time to target. 
So right now, out to 16.98 kilometers, the shelf flight time is 8.46 seconds. Now, this is a very useful point of information because it allows you to target a point on your reticle. Now, in Nomogram's reticle, the top row of numbers is shelf flight time in seconds, generally calibrated for ship around 30 knots. Now, you'll notice that, of course, when you do use it in reality, that there's still some certain minor deviations, and it has a lot to do with sort of vectors and things like that. A little bit too complex to talk about in a tutorial video, so we'll save you guys the math. But it's a good starting point. So if you're targeting a ship that's going about 30 knots, use the top row, look at the shelf flight time, assuming, again, the ship is going broadside and at full speed, you put where the green arrow is roughly on that reticle, you put that on the ship, you click, you fire, and you'll generally hit. But Nomogram also has the bottom row of numbers. And the bottom row of numbers, you'll notice that the 8.3 or 8.4 second shelf flight time is in a very different place from where it is on the top row. And that's because the bottom row is calibrated for ships going at 20 knots. So if you're targeting really slow, like American standard type battleships or whatever early on, the bottom row is very, very useful. Of course, the bottom and top row, if you think about it, if you run into a ship that's going like 25 knots, for example, it's pretty easy to do as well, right? Because you just find the number that's sort of between the bottom and the top rows, right? So if you're looking at the midpoint between the bottom and top, it's probably around seven seconds in the top row and around like 10.5 on the bottom. That'd be for a ship moving at 25. Furthermore, if you're targeting a ship that's moving at like, let's say 40 knots, then all you have to do is take whatever your shelf flight time is for the bottom row and times it by two. So right now it's like 8.31, for example, if you multiply by two, it'd be around 16.6 .6 on the bottom row. And that, of course, will allow you to hit a ship that's moving at 40 knots. So it's a very, very useful reticle. Now let's show you how this works in action. So here we have a Texas, which is a 20.5 knot stock battleship. Uh, if you have a speed flag, of course, it'll go a little bit faster. Again, that info panel in the mod station is also really useful in this case, because you can see 20.5 is the base speed. Anyways, 5.26 second shelf flight time. I target the bottom row of numbers, about 5.25 right between the superstructure and the number one funnel. Now, since the Texas is moving at 20.5 knots, and it's also still coming towards me at a bit of an angle, I'd expect these shells to land a little bit further back, which they do at around the number one funnel. Here is a different test again. This is now on a Jean Bart, which is a 30 knot ship. And again, shelf flight time is approximately seven seconds. So I'm targeting around the number two turret. Again, do keep in mind that factors such as like dispersion in terms of just sort of the overall circle, the dispersion circle, it can affect, of course, where the shells will go as well. I'll show you another clip right after this one where you'll see that massive disparity. The nomogram crosshair is just accurate enough that the numbers can be used quite efficiently with the shelf flight time in seconds. So in this case, I was targeting number two turret roughly, and the shells landed a little bit further back. I mean, you'll see them sort of hitting right just behind the number two and right around the superstructure area. And that is going to be sort of the variability that you're going to have to accept in the game. Also to show you the effects of dispersion, this is the salvo just preceding the last one. Same essential way of aiming, you know, seven second to flight time, seven second marker right behind the number two turret to the superstructure. And you'll see the dispersion causes me to hit sort of along the entire length of the ship almost from the superstructure back. So, you know, obviously a number of other factors will affect how your shells behave, but with Nomogram and the scale, at least you're pretty much guaranteed that on the first salvo that you fire, assuming that you've got everything judged correctly, that you're at least gonna get your shells on target, even if it's not pinpoint exactly where you want it. And finally, we're gonna target a ship that's going to be moving at about 40 knots, so a Georgia with its speed boost on is going around that speed. So here, Shelf flight time to target is about 10 seconds. So what I'm doing is taking the bottom number multiplying by two. So I'm aiming at the 20 second marker of the numbers on the bottom, not using the 30 knot scale on top, using the 20 knot scale on the bottom. And, you know, firing at Georgia. Georgia, again, is moving very, very close to 40. It's like 39.85 here. And shells are coming down and you'll see I'm gonna hit just around that 20, maybe 21 second marker, I think. Gonna get close to there. Yeah, you'll notice the shells everywhere from about 20 to about 21, maybe even a little bit past that. 
So on to the next challenge, which is how do you deal with ships that are angled either coming towards you or ships that are angled going away from you? How do you get your aim right? Well, the first thing to do is to actually utilize the little tiny circle on your minimap. And that little tiny circle is where your guns are going to put the shells. And depending on whether the ship is coming towards you at a sharp angle, whether it's going away from you, the speed, the amount of time your shells are going to get to target, um, you're going to move that circle in to slightly different positions. In this case, because the Jean Bart was coming towards me, I put the circle right onto the ship icon at the bow. If it was going away from me, like in this particular situation, I'm going to put that little circle a little bit ahead of the whole ship icon. Then look back at my actual reticle in terms of the horizontal, and I'm going to fire salvo and see if I'm happy with that. Also the horizontal and the vertical, by the way. I'm going to fire salvo here. So the circle on the mini map is a little bit ahead of the ship. Fire. Salvo looks okay. It's going to look like it's going to hit around super structure area. Okay. And so if I'm happy with that, I can keep firing. If I'm not, I can make a slight adjustment. I felt like it landed a little bit low, so I made a little bit adjustment to go slightly higher up. And let's see if the results of the next salvo is any better. And I do like this a little bit more. And so you can make these adjustments by looking at your crosshair after you use the minimap to help position you vertically and horizontally against ships that are going at an angle. Of course, do keep in mind that, you know, depending on the ship speed, you know, if you're going with a 40 knot ship or a 20 knot ship, the amount of lead you give on the minimap has to be adjusted as well. But all in all, this is a pretty good method of targeting ships that are angled, although when they're flat broadside, I would strongly more recommend the initial using the nomogram and the shell flight time in seconds. Still, end of the day, do keep in mind that aiming is an art and it is something that requires a lot of practice. So every tip that I'm giving you here, you know, go into game, you know, apply it and then see if you can make adjustments. And if you can get that into muscle memory, then you're going to be a lot more consistent with your aim in the future. And that just about does it for episode 3 on aiming. I hope these tips have been somewhat helpful to you. And of course, please go in game, try it out. You know, hopefully it improves your games and you see a lot more damage coming uh, from the ships that you're playing. Leave me your comments and opinions and whatnot in the comment section below, including, of course, if you're seeing improvements in your aim overall. Other than that, folks, take care. Have yourselves a really good one. I'll see you all in the next tutorial video.